Hi, I'm Christina and this is Tomes and Tequila. So today I thought I would talk to you guys for a minute about hmm, body image and body image issues and women and I don't know self-esteem being hooked up with our body images and how messed up that can get for girls. I don't know. I'm just going to ramble at you for a minute, I guess. This is kind of a sensitive topic for me because it just touches really close to home and it's something that I really struggle with. And so I was thinking about writing a blog post about it, but it would be very, very personal if I were to write a blog post about it. Because when I was young, I definitely had an eating disorder. My poor dog is so losing her mind over this thunderstorm. Anyway, um, when I was young, I most definitely had an eating disorder. Um, I would say that uh, my, my eating problems started um, about the time that my parents got divorced, <laughs> and I'm I'm not gonna sit here and and blame all my problems on my parents' divorce or something like that, um, but my mom left and me and my sister stayed with my dad, and my dad was not um, equipped to take care of us, and um, well, nah, saying he was not he was not equipped to well, my dad did not know how to make himself a sandwich. So feeding a sixth grade daughter and a 10th grade daughter didn't go over very well. And um, I would say that that's probably where my issues with food started was because I, I wasn't eating well at home. And then that turned into like an, an obsession with not eating. And in middle school, I remember... Um, having competitions with friends to see who could go the longest without eating or who could eat the least. And I, and I was thin, but I don't think people would have looked at me and thought that I had a food problem. But I remember, um, my grandmother being the only person who really noticed that there was any kind of problems with my, my food issues. And sitting across the table from her at Thanksgiving and her uh, commenting that, you know, I'd never let my lips touch my fork, <laughs> that I would like eat like this, like it was the most hideous thing sticking a fork in my mouth. And my mother had never said anything to me about it. Um, but I became like the master at, you know, scooting food around my plate and making it look like I was eating something when I wasn't really... And I would say it got better for a while and then um, got a lot worse again uh, later in high school. And I hit a point um, later on in high school where, you know, I wasn't eating and, the, and I was also taking, um, you know, GNC stimulants <laughs> back before they had... Uh, rules about what GNC could put in their stuff, you know, um, to help me keep my appetite down and my energy level up, even though I wasn't feeding myself. And I know I hit a point in time when I was under a hundred pounds and I'm about five, eight, five, eight and a half. Um, and my mother finally sat me down and said, look, if you lose any more weight, I'm taking you to the doctor and I'm going to tell them you need to stay. And that scared me. You know, the, the threat of being put in the hospital was enough to get me um, eating again. But I really think that it was like, it was a coping mechanism for me at the time. Um, I had a lot of stressful things going on in my life. And so I just coped with it by not eating. You know, it was like something I could control in my life. And, um, you know, I always had 
self-esteem issues, which, you know, what woman doesn't have self-esteem issues, really? It's kind of like a pat thing to say, but, um, you know, I never felt like I was good enough, <laughs> good enough, because I, as I mess with my hair, you can tell I'm getting nervous. Um, you know, I... I don't want to sit here and, and, and blame my parents or talk a bunch about my parents, but I, I've always had issues with just never feeling like I was good enough for anybody. And I think that the, the food issues probably, um, you know, some of that had something to do with it. But um, as I got older, I just, it was like I flip-flopped. So instead of not eating when I got in stressful situations and things, I just ate instead. So whereas I went from being, you know, really, really tiny and all that, then I packed on the pounds. So um, I was thinking about all this and, you know, self-esteem and uh, our, our issues with, uh, self-worth and how we can let stuff like that get mixed up in your head and connect it to our bodies and, uh, and how we shouldn't. <laughs> and, you know, um, how I probably still need to really work on self-esteem problems and self-esteem issues and coping mechanisms and good coping mechanisms and um, how to handle stress well, and I probably still don't have uh, great coping skills, um, nor do I probably handle stress as well as I probably should. But it's funny, you know, you look at your kids, and you look at, especially if you have a daughter, and, you know, you think about what you pass on to them, especially when it comes to self-esteem and uh, stuff like that. And, you know, I always tried so hard when my daughter was young to make sure she felt like she was beautiful. And, you know, my daughter was always so worried about her freckles and stuff. And I would spend so much time trying to tell her how beautiful her freckles were and, giving her freckles names and, and telling her how adorable she was and trying to make sure that her, you know, her confidence was high and make sure I didn't do stuff to squash her or, or make her feel like she was less than, less than worthy. Um, but I'm sure that, you know, that's also tempered with, um, watching me and my struggles and, you know, I wish that I had my own crap together a little bit better because I'm sure that, you know, your actions probably, let's say actions speak more than words or better than words or, and I'm sure that my, my actions have probably spoken the wrong thing. Anyway, these are the things I'm thinking about today. And if I could go back and talk to young me, you know, what would I say to make me do things differently? And if I was talking to a, a girl who was going through the same things, um, you know, what would I tell her to try and, and help her, you know, find better coping mechanisms, better ways of handling stress than, you know, um, starving or eating too much or self-harm or, you know, any of the things that, that people do who don't have good coping skills. And I can't say I've come up with anything brilliant, but I don't know. I'd love to hear your, your thoughts if you're watching this and, and listening to me ramble. Um, I'd love to hear what you think. If you have any experience with this, um, do you have any advice? What would you say? If you could go back and talk to me 
when I was 12, 13, starting out with this kind of problems, you know, what would you say? Or if, if I was 20 and having problems, what would you say? What would your advice be? You know, what are good coping mechanisms? What are good healthy coping mechanisms? You know, how, how do healthy people cope with stress? Do you go for runs? Do you know, do you hop on the treadmill? Do you punch a punching bag? Do you write? I used to write. I write sometimes. You know, what are, what are good coping mechanisms? I'm curious. We'll see if I write a blog post. If I write a blog post, this will probably come together a lot better than it, it's doing just looking at my phone. Just got a lot on my mind tonight. So yeah, I'd love to know. Love to know your thoughts. Love to know if you had any issues with this or if you have any issues with it now. And I'll see you guys next week, hopefully with a more structured video. Less rambling, more structure. Bye.